All right, so Geert, um, we regularly get questions uh, related to sound, the term sound engineering practice, uh, which is defined in the, um, or used in the pressure equipment directive. Um, now, before we dive in, let me just briefly show where in the uh, pressure equipment directive this term sound engineering practice um, is used. And, yes. then, and then let us, you know, take some time to discuss what this means and, and how engineers should actually um, deal with this. So uh, in front of us, we have the pressure equipment directive um, and in article four. So this is article four technical requirements and then item number three it says pressure equipment and assemblies below or equal to limits set out in points a b c and c of paragraph one and paragraph two respectively shall be designed and manufactured in according with the sound engineering practice of a member state in order to ensure safe use pressure equipment and assemblies shall be accompanied by adequate instructions for use um, so this is the first time in the pressure equipment directive that the um, term sound engineering practice is used. Yeah, A little later correct. on, uh, there's another reference to it in, in uh, Article 6, um, obligations of manufacturers. It says, when placing their pressure equipment or assemblies referred to in Article uh, 4.1 and 2 um, on the market or using them for their own purposes, manufacturers shall ensure that they have been designed and manufactured in accordance, in accordance with the essential safety uh, requirements set out in Annex 1. So this is if you have Article 4, Part 1 or Part 2. And then it also notes when placing their pressure equipment or assemblies referred to in Article 4.3, which is what we just um, uh, saw on the market or using them for their own purpose, manufacturers shall ensure that they have been designed and manufactured in accordance with the sound engineering practice of a member state. Um, so, so then the final reference to sound engineering practice is found in the tables. That's of um, appendix two, let's jump straight there. Yeah, so this for example is um, first conformity assessment table. And here, this is uh, one of the tables where we have the pressure on the vertical axis and the uh, volume of the equipment on the horizontal axis. Now, obviously below 0 0.5 bar gauge, there's, uh, there's no category because that is outside of the scope of the PED. But then we see this lower left corner. It doesn't refer to any of the category numbers, one, two, three, or four. Um, which, which are linked to the conformity assessment procedures, but a uh, reference is made to Article 4, Paragraph 3, which is the one that we just read. And, and this is the case for all these tables. At the lower left corner, you see reference being made to Article 4, uh, Paragraph 3, which is uh, basically the one where we started, where sound engineering practice uh, was, was mentioned for the first time. Um, having said this, like what what I hope to cover um, uh, during this conversation, uh, um, Geert, is you know what what is this? How should people de deal with this? How how should they uh, uh, interpret this for their projects? So let's just start at the beginning. Like what is sound engineering practice? Sometimes abbreviated as SEP. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yes, the, the sound engineering practice uh, actually is uh, for um, uh, for a pressure equipment uh, that is not considered very dangerous. Uh, so it can um, be put into the market uh, 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 with, uh, with very uh, small uh, restrictions. Um, <clears throat> uh, it means that uh, you just refer to our Article uh, 4, Paragraph 3, uh, where these um, uh, this pressure equipment is uh, mentioned. Uh, actually, you should add that um, um, uh, the pressure uh, must be uh, must be higher than half a bar gauge. <coughs> uh, furthermore, um, uh, 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 the, the pressure equipment must not be on um, uh, on the list of exceptions which you can find in. Uh, let me see. 
uh, in Article 1, Paragraph 2 of the Pressure Equipment Directive, because that, that uh, kind of uh, pressure equipment is outside uh, uh, the scope of, um, of uh, the Pressure Equipment Directive. Yeah, so, so it so, should be in the scope of the PED, right? Yeah, that's basically that's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what you have to do is, uh, if you have, uh, actually for all pressure equipment uh, that you're designing, uh, or may, maybe if it's a bought out item, uh, you can also consider and, and have to check some some things uh, to determine whether or not it's uh, it's a sound engineering practice. So you have to do the classification uh, the classification of all pressure equipment uh, uh, in, um, uh, in in your scope uh, in your scope of as manufacturer. For instance, um, and uh, if you do that uh, on the correct way, so based on uh, the, the design pressure, uh, based on volume, for instance, for pressure vessels, uh, or based on uh, pressure, the design pressure, uh, and uh, the, uh, the DN size of, of your piping, and then you're, you're talking about piping. Um, if you do that classification uh, also based on uh, the, the kind of uh, liquid that is inside your pressure vessel or inside your piping, uh, then you end up with um, uh, with uh, the category in tables two of the pressure equipment directive, um, stating that the pressure equipment is category one, two, three, or four. Uh, actually, if you have uh, piping, the highest category is category three. Uh, but there is also uh, what we sometimes call uh, uh, pressure equipment in category zero. It's, it's not an official term in the uh, pressure equipment directive. Um, but you show that um, that in these tables, uh, in the left in the left corner, you have. Uh, uh, even very high pressures, uh, uh, but but the small volumes and small uh, uh, diameters of piping, uh, it can be considered as an Article Four uh, category. Now, uh, Article Four, uh, Paragraph Three, uh, equipment, and that is defined as the uh, sound engineering practice equipment. Yeah. So so I think um, uh, you know. Especially if, if we go to Article Four and Paragraph Three, you know it says um, if you end up in this in this well category, um, uh, it should be designed and manufactured in according with the sound engineering practice of a member state. Yes. And obviously, like like this is where the confusion starts. And Eng engineers um, designers typically want to have some some. Um, design standard or directive or some some framework to make sure that they're doing the right thing right um yeah. uh, so so then this is a little vague so um how for example does this relate to um for example the SME B31.3 or EN3480 for for piping yeah. or the SME um boil and pressure vessel code uh, uh, section 8 or part eight, or or the EN thirty four for five for um, pressure vessels. Um, like basically, the question is like, what is a sound engineering practice according to a member state, and, and how does that relate to the design? Yes. Can you use them? Can you not use them? Yeah, actually, it's not it's it's not defined in the in the uh, pressure equipment uh, directive, um, and you have to go back uh, before nineteen ninety eight, I think. Uh, uh, there was no pressure equipment directive at that time, uh, and for instance, in the Netherlands, uh, you could you had to use um, uh, the Dutch pressure vessel rules, for instance, for uh, putting uh, your pressure equipment uh, into the market. Uh, but since the PD, uh, uh, you're free to choose. Um, uh, 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 design code for for your pressure equipment directive. In the case of sound engineering practice, this can also be done. So um, uh, the 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 objective, of course, is to to have uh, pressure equipment that is uh, 
safe uh, for operation and for use uh, in, in, into the market. Uh, so you can use, uh, for instance, for a pressure vessel SME8 Division 1, uh, but you can also um, use uh, other design codes. Uh, uh, the main purpose is to have, uh, to have a safe, uh, um, a safe uh, design and it should operate uh, on a sa in a safe way uh, into the market. Um, and that, that is actually what you, uh, what you have to do. So you choose a design code uh, and uh, you have to follow the design code, uh, not only for uh, design calculations, uh, but also for making uh, um, construction uh, drawings, uh, uh, of course, you have to, um, to do some tests uh, and inspections that are defined and perhaps also heat treatment or whatever uh, things are um, defined in the design code that you have chosen. Yeah. So, so if I understand it correctly, your um, uh, a, a designer or manufacturer is, is like there's a certain amount of freedom to choose uh, what, what, you know, um, framework to use, whether you use, for example, an ASME design code or another design code, maybe you come up with another method to, to basically prove that you are safe. But, yes. but um, uh, as long as you have, uh, you know, enough confidence in your process that you can, if, if anything uh, might go wrong or, or, um, Yes. You have to prove it to the government that yeah. that you are able to show that you have made a des safe design. For example, linking it to certain tests or anything. And and um, if I understand you correctly, one of the ways of doing this is simply choosing a um, design code that is common in in the industry uh, yes. to show that that you are uh, designing it uh, properly. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, <laughs> and and remember that. Uh, um, <clears throat> the manufacturer of the pressure equipment is always responsible for what is happening uh, if you use this uh, type of equipment. And there's also uh, some legislation, European legislation, for products um, that you put into the market. Um, you are all, you all, also, you are always uh, responsible uh, as a manufacturer for uh, safe use of this uh, equipment. And remember that for um, the sound engineering practice equipment, uh, there is no involvement uh, whatsoever for a notified body. So right. um, if you have this type of uh, equipment, you can put it into the market uh, without a third, um, third party inspection. Yeah. So, so you're think... fully responsible as a manufacturer uh, to design uh, a safe sound engineering practice uh, equipment yeah i think you the the directive uh, you were just referring to uh, related to the the responsibility of the manufacturer is uh, directive 85 uh, dash sorry slash 374 slash eec which is the um, directive called liability for defective products yes. um, and this is a, 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 like a directive which is valid for any product in, in the European market, whether it being, you know, a dishwasher or a yeah, that's uh, right. industrial system. Yeah. Um, so so uh, the manufacturer is responsible and, and therefore, according to this directive, sound engineering practice, you have to use uh, an, uh, a, a, um, a practice of a member state and, and one framework to choose can always be a design code, which is common in, in a certain industry. Yes, that's right. <clears throat> so so follow-up question would be like uh, the essential safety requirements um, of the pressure equipment directive. Um, is it required to, uh, if you have, a, if you have a, an, an item that has to be designed according to sound engineering practice, is it um, required to also conform with the essential safety requirements? No, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not required by the pressure equipment directive. Um, um, that you have to follow these uh, uh, essential safety requirements that are defined in uh, uh, in the Annex One of the Pressure Equipment Directive. Um, of course, you have to to uh, to uh, to know whether or not the, the equipment is safe. So um, it, it's your own choice 
uh, to follow these um, uh, uh, to follow uh, the the not to follow the PD, but you have to know that it's safe. So, uh, uh, and you can find examples in, for instance, in Annex Two of the Persian Equipment Directive, how how you can do that. So, um, but it's it's not part of any uh, conformity assessment procedure. All right. So, so um, uh, just to make sure that that uh, I conclude correctly, so the the essential safety requirements they are not. Uh, necessary to in your product is not it's not necessary to comply with no. the essential safety requirements. No, it's and what you're also yeah. is excluded, and what you're also saying is, since you're in the sound engineering practice, you know section, uh, your product is not categorized as category one, two, three, or four, and therefore no, no conformity <clears throat> assessment procedure is applicable. Yeah. So, so things like you know what is typically um, being discussed in the conformity assessment procedure, you know, if you need a notified body, if you need a certain quality management systems, mm, yeah. all, all those details, those are, are not relevant because the conformity assessment procedures do not apply. That's right, yeah. And and how about, um, for example, documentation that you give to, to the customer for the item or or maybe, let's say, CE stamping uh, yeah, of, the, that, of the item? Yeah, that, that is something you can, you can find in Article 4, uh, paragraph three, uh, where the sound engineering practice equipment is is defined, uh, you need um, a sort of uh, um, manual uh, in order to um, to use this this kind of equipment. Uh, um, and, and actually, that's the only thing uh, the, uh, the the pressure equipment directive is is uh, telling you to do. So. Um, if you buy, uh, for instance, a coffee machine, you also have uh, uh, um, you also have a manual uh, how to to operate the, the coffee machine, uh, and that that's something uh, you also need for uh, pressure equipment that is uh, categorized as sound engineering practice. All right, yeah, and and how about um, CE marking? Yeah, the CE marking is uh, is, is uh, excluded, so. Uh, if you put this um, uh, this type of equipment into the market, uh, uh, it may it is uh, forbidden to to uh, uh, to stamp it with a CE mark. All right, all right. So so yeah. if if you have a, an item that is sound engineering practice in in uh, the falls under sound engineering practice, you are not allowed to uh, provide CE marking. That's right. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Um, and and maybe we can have have a little bit of a uh, discussion about um, uh, in the situation where you have, for example, a vessel, a pressurized vessel that is in, let's say, category one, um, categorized as category one according to the directive, but yeah. but you have, for example, a set of tubes connecting to it that are um, because of the lower diameter, or lower volume, that are um, categorized as sound engineering practice. Yes. Um, how how would you combine those during the design process? Well, you you have to uh, what I said before. Uh, you have to make a, a, a document uh, stating that every um, uh, every part of the pressure uh, uh, pressurized equipment uh, uh, should have uh, be uh, categorized. So you, you can end up with a vessel uh, which is category one, uh, and you have some tubing, for instance, uh, which is uh, sound engineering practice. Um, you you just can combine it, uh, uh, and the the only thing that this documentation is 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 about to to define the, the pressure uh, uh, equipment. So uh, you can split up your uh, uh, your pressure equipment in parts that have, for instance, category one or maybe a high category, maybe up to four, and you have some uh, parts that are uh, categorized as uh, sound engineering practice. Uh, to combine them, um, you you can always combine them, but uh, the main the main issue is, of course, that uh, also the sound engineering practice in combination. Uh, with uh, category one, for category one you have to choose um, uh, 
a module uh, A2, I, th I think. No, it's a module A in, um, in the pressure equipment directive. You have to follow that, but uh, the only thing that, that you can say about uh, sound engineering practice uh, parts, uh, they must be uh, they must be safe, um, uh, safe uh, for using it in in this. Uh, yeah, you can say, you can also say this is a sort of assembly, uh, but uh, but the, the use of this uh, sound engineering practice uh, equipment uh, must be safe, also in combination with uh, category one vessel, for instance. Yeah, and and um, can you then, if you have an assembly of of you know items with different categories and and some are sound engineering practice, um, can you then still stamp the total assembly with a CE marking? Yes, yes, that's possible, but uh, only for um, uh, the category that you have uh, chosen. For instance, uh, if if the highest category in in this uh, combination is um, is uh, category one, for instance, then you have to see market. Um, and in, in case, uh, uh, in, in case that that uh, it's category one, you, there is there is no involvement of the notified body. Uh, so the, the identification number of of the notified body cannot be uh, uh, combined with the CE mark. Yeah. Um, uh, and also, uh, you, uh, what you can do is uh, make a reference on your nameplate uh, to the um, uh, to the categories that uh, of the parts uh, of your pressure equipment, uh, but don't mention the the, the sound engineering practice uh, parts there, because mm. you can't CE mark uh, these items. Mm. Yeah. So they they can't they they can't be on the on the nameplate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, um, all right. Well, well. Uh, thanks uh, um, for elaborating, uh, Geert. Yeah, you're welcome, uh, Luke.